morning geeks go and get your coffee go and get your chair sit down here right out there it's morning geeks hey everybody jeffrey power is here from geekazine think magazine put in a geek and another episode of the morning geeks the show where we geek out on everything 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 from top to bottom and everything in between and of course, I'm doing my Halloween spirit. You know, I was trying to figure out which costume I should put on. And I decided, well, let's just go simple. I bought this shirt last year. I really didn't get a chance to wear it. Because then I bought the, the Chewbacca full... Uh, it's it's like a jumpsuit type thing. And it's meant for sleeping. But uh, we went as, uh, as sexy Han Solo and Chewbacca last year. So I thought that, you know, I, I might as well wear this shirt. So... Yeah, of course, Monday, Monday, Monday is Halloween. So grab your Halloweenies, grab your kitties, grab your other people, grab the people that, you know, you know, don't don't grab, you know, we, we, we're not doing the Donald Trump thing. So we'll, we'll move on from there. But anyway, celebrate Halloween and, and have a safe Halloween. Uh, of course, tomorrow night, the big parties. Um, I know here in Madison, we have a thing called Freak Fest where everybody goes downtown and celebrates bands and stuff like that. It's it's crazy. So be safe. Don't drink and drive. Cops are going to be out in full force. If you don't think that, then you, you, you're crazy. You're crazy in the head. So And don't be a clown. Just don't be a clown. So Anyway, in, in both senses, don't be a clown as in the physical clown, and don't be a clown as in the literal clown. So anyway. Oh, hey, you know, it's been a, uh, it's, we had two weeks off. Uh, of course, I went to Disneyland, and I should have queued up some of those photos, but I didn't. Um, and had a lot of fun, lots of great stuff. I'm going to put up some 360 videos of me going uh, down some of these, the, the ones that you can actually see stuff. I mean, we went through the haunted house. Of course, it was decked out for Halloween, so it had all the... Uh, it had all the uh, uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas stuff on there. Uh, it was really cool. It was awesome. It was a great treat to be at Disneyland on Halloween, uh, gearing up for Halloween. The only problem was we went that Thursday, so the fireworks show didn't happen because they were preparing for Friday's fireworks show, which was the Halloween fireworks. And, of course, I didn't get to see that, which kind of sucked. So I kind of lost out on that, which, you know, I don't Disney, come on. Of course, Disney's, I'm part of, technically part of Disney through the Maker Max uh, uh, group there over at max.maker.com. So um, I'm, you know, uh, you know, it is, it is what it is. So anyway, let's move on. We've got a lot of great stuff to talk about because, you know, I had two weeks off uh, last week. I had another, another thing that I had to take care of. So, but we're back and we're here. It is Stardate 306179.47. Just in case you're curious, happy Black Cat Appreciation Day. I'll say that again, Black Cat Appreciation Day. Did you know that 70% of abandoned cats in uh, in this country uh, were because they were unphotogenic black cats? So if you see a black cat today, so pet it, say hi, and appreciate it. So uh, happy Na Navy Day, happy World Day of Audiovisual Heritage. And happy birthday to Captain James Cook, or his actual pirate. And I've kind of been a pirate because, you know, I had my patch eye. Uh, you know, I, I actually wear a patch eye. I'll talk about that in a second. Anyway, happy birthday to John Cleese. Yes, one of the, what's the city walkman. He, he did, I can't get my leg that high up, you know. I, I need to work out at the gym a little bit more. Happy birthday to Jeff East. He basically played the young Clark Kent in the 1978 Superman movie. And Robert Picardo from Star Trek. Yeah, the doctor from Star Trek uh, Voyager. Happy birthday to Robert Picardo there. So, and uh, great stuff. Uh, got some new stuff here. I'm going to start with this one right here. It is the blue, blue, blue raspberry microphone. And is it, look at this. This is kind of cool. And I like this because it's got a weird stand to it. And I think they, they kind of missed the point on the stand. I think this what they should have done, because this is meant uh, for mobile devices, such as iPhones. And... Uh, what they could have done is they could have taken, and by the way, I did get a new, I got the iPhone 7 uh, also. But anyway, uh, they could have turned this into a stand. And I'm going to tell them, hey, can you can you figure that, refigure this out so this could actually be a stand of some sort? Because then I can hold this, I could do boss jock on here, 
and then uh, I can uh, I can record from this microphone. But anyway, this is the Blue Microphones Raspberry microphone. It's a USB microphone. It's uh, I haven't had a real chance to test it, but from the initial tests, it wasn't too bad. And it comes uh, it comes with a lot of cool stuff. It folds upon itself, and uh, it comes into a bag. Goes into a bag. You get two uh, USB cables. They also give you this adapter. So if you've got a I think what this adapter, I haven't put it on yet, but I think what this does is you can put it onto a microphone stand and then you can put this onto the microphone stand as well. So that's pretty cool. And I'm pretty sure what that that's what it is because, you know, it's a microphone. What do you expect? So, um, of course, like I said, I got the new iPhone 7, uh, it, 7 Plus, excuse me. It's a, it's a big difference here. I got the 6 right here. We're going to uh, move things down. There's the six. There's the seven. Let's let's zoom that in. We got the six and the seven plus right side by side. As you can see, it's a lot bigger. Um, so I'm getting used to that because it, it's tough to do one-handed stuff off of the iPhone seven plus. It really is. So anyway, um, also got a new keyboard. Now this is because of all the bells calls. Uh, now, uh, as you can see, I I did get glasses. I, had, I usually wear contacts, so I had to go and get glasses because uh, the contacts were always, uh, it was always bothering because I can't close this eye fully, not, not just yet. Um, Bell's palsy a few weeks ago, uh, left side of my face pretty much stopped working, and so I've been trying to work it out, uh, different things, like for instance, I don't know if you notice this, but my microphone is actually on my right side, hopefully so it doesn't, because I have a problem with plosives now. So if I say Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, you'll, you'll see that. But if, you know, if I do this, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, less noticeable. So what I did was I moved the microphone over here, hopefully getting better shots of the plosives and go from there. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I didn't do any fine tuning, so maybe, maybe, maybe it's not working. So tell me if it is, if it isn't. I know Robert Hicks is in the, in the notes right now. He said hi, so hi back to you and go from there. So anyway, um... What else? Uh, oh, yeah, so because of the Bell's Palsy, I actually ended up getting a brand new keyboard for the desktop so I can do all this because I had a hard time seeing because every time I look down, my eye starts to water, and I got to watch out for that. So I might be doing this just to wipe out some of the, the, uh, the water out of my eyes because it's starting to water up. That's a good thing, though, because it keeps my eye hydrated, um, and I don't have a chance of losing that eye, and I don't want to lose that eye because I love that eye. I love that eye too. Don't worry about that. But anyway, uh, I got this. Uh, I, I, it's one of the top uh, top rated Amazon keyboards. Uh, I needed a new keyboard anyway. This is from uh, Mazzoni, Mazzoni or whatever it is. Um, it's a mechanical gaming keyboard. It changes light, uh, color, um, backlit uh, keyboard. That's what I really wanted was the backlit keyboard. Changed colors so I can go from green to yellow to red. Um, only problem is there's a there's the button on there that changes the lights. And as I'm typing, I'll accidentally hit that button and then change the lights. Got to get used to the keyboard, so I'm not 100% if I like it or not. But so far, so good. It's, it's a mechanical keyboard, so it's got that clicky sound to it. And I, I really like that because they're raised keys and I can really type. And I don't make as too many flubs as I did with uh, my other keyboard there. So, But anyway, that was that. And then, of course, I got... I needed to get some, you know, feel good stuff for myself. So, uh, I bought the uh, this is uh, this is actually the TC Helicon Voice Live Three. And if you watched my uh, Instagram video yesterday, you kind of heard a little bit about it. It wasn't great because I was doing it on the fly, and the harmonies, you know, they're not off. But once I start sing, you know, uh, putting songs to that, it the I, I so far the songs that I've done have been really cool. And I, I have a TC Helicon, the XTG, I think it's called. And uh, it was nice, but it was very basic. This one gives me a whole bunch more. It also replaces my guitar pedal board because I can bring in the uh, the sounds, the, the crunch sounds and stuff like that. So it's all, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm really excited because of that. And, uh, and yeah, go from there. Let's move on because I'm running out of time here. Let's see what else we got. Uh, da, 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 da. Room change. Of course, you notice the new TV in the background. Not really new, but I changed around some TVs in the house, and I finally got a monitor back here. So I made some uh, Morning Geeks and Geekazine logos, and uh, I, I might do some pictures and stuff like that in the future here. So we'll see what happens there. 
Um, and I think uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, congratulations to the Cubs and the and the, uh, the Indians. Ugh. Cubs and the Indians. Uh, as far as it's still one to one, game three I think is tonight, and uh, so we'll see what happens here. It, it'll definitely be a memorable one. Uh, just hearing about Kyle uh, Swar- Swarber, I think that's his pronoun- how you pronounce his name. Uh, his story of his two home runs as uh, the DH in the second game tells me this. And, of course, he can't play in the National League in the third game because there is no designated hitter in, uh, in National uh, Base. And, 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 and yeah, NH, no, that's, that's Hockey League. Uh, in the uh, National League, NL, that's it. Wow. Okay, so congratulations. Uh, it's going to be a great series. I'm not a big baseball fan like I used to be. But uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully, you know, I, I am, you know, I am from the Midwest. I don't root to, for too many teams, but I do ro- root for the Cubs from now on. And then, you know, to break that 108-year streak, whatever that was. I think it was uh, 1908, the last time that they've been to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, the big game. <laughs> the big game uh, i can't even think anyway let's move on from there and I'm, I'm hitting my keys here so i'm messing up let's let's do this uh if you haven't uh found out the about my scony geek nation and the patreon page that is what's going on and we did have some problems this earlier this week i went to the page and it was down actually came up with a 404 error and I, I, I messaged him. I said, hey, what's going on? What's going on? It took him, it took him a while to fix the problem. But apparently I wasn't hacked. I was nothing, nothing like that. There was a glitch in Patreon. And they got it fixed. And uh, yesterday everything was back up and running. So a little bit stressful because it was down for at least two days. It might have been more because I, I didn't check the page in a few days. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it works. But... For now, uh, join the Scony Geek Nation by going over to patreon.com forward slash geekazine. And of course, that helps keep the lights on. It's kind of, it's, if you don't know what that is, it's like a crowdfund, um, except you're, you're helping content creators. So for a dollar a month, $12 a year, you can help me create content because I'm going out to CES in January. I'm going out to NAM in January. I'm, you know, I'm going to all these places to get you more content. And I just need help doing it. So join the join the Scony Geek Nation at patreon.com forward slash geekazine. And I'd appreciate it much. And we'll go from there. So, all right. Enough of this, enough of that. Let's get into your show because that's what you're doing. I'm not going to play background music because apparently we've had the, the programs having some issues. I sent in some trouble tickets. We'll see what's going on there. Um, but uh, that's, I, I don't think you're, you're going to worry about that too much. But are you... Worried about your geek news? Yes, and you want it right now, so let's do it right now. Are you ready for Halloween? Halloween is coming. There's still time to get a geeky costume. Um, even if it's a horrible costume, Geeks, uh, Geek.com highlighted the best and the worst costumes out there, from a realistic Jared Leto to a not-so-realistic uh, Groot. Of course, uh, these costumes are all one-size-fits-all, and some of them are uh, cheapest made but most expensive out there. Um, and even others are trying to avoid some copyrights, so you get the close, but no, not really Chewbacca type uh, costume. Uh, so, you know, it really depends on how much you really want to spend on that. Speaking of costumes, uh, did you see what Richard Sherman, uh, I'm sorry, Seattle Seahawks, Richard Potter Sherman, Potter Sherman, uh, did during a press conference? He donned the famous gown and glasses. Because his son told him, hey, you got to wear something. He was also a, he was a basically asked questions like, well, what's tougher, football or Quidditch? He did not diss his sport, though. <laughs> he said, basically said, you know, Quidditch is pretty tough, but I do have to say, yeah, it's, football's a little bit tougher. So, um, But really cool, uh, good job, and, and making, making some people feel really part of the thing, especially geeks. Geeks love it when when people that are technically I don't know if they're if how much of he uh, of a geek he is, but when people become geeks for the geeks, the geeks love it. Simple as that. So you, you gained a lot of fans simply by wearing the Harry Potter costume. So hopefully I get a lot of fans for wearing the the pumpkin shirt. 
you know, it's possible. So, um, what I don't wear though is a watch. I, I used to wear a watch, and and I have different wearables that I have uh, tested out from time to time. Um, but once that cell phone showed up, I basically really didn't need it anymore, even if it was connected to the phone. Um, I, I just don't like something on my wrist. Uh, being a drummer, it's, it's tough. So um, Now, market intelligence is actually, we got this article from Gizmodo. Market intelligence from IDC reported that smartphone shipments actually are down 51.6%. Um, I'm sorry, uh, smart watch shipments. Uh, actually, phone shipments are down too. Um, and a lot of people are saying, well, it might partly be because of the Galaxy Note 7 incidences. It might be because of the fact that these things are pretty fast. I mean, I got the iPhone 7 Plus simply because of that camera upgrade. Um, not not anything else more. Otherwise, I might have stuck with my iPhone 6 and saved a few dollars for uh, for a while until next year when the, then the 10th anniversary iPhone comes out. Or, you know, I might have switched to Pixel because that if if iPhone 7 Plus didn't have all the advances that I that I was looking for. I was looking at that Google Pixel, and I will be getting a Google Pixel to, to test out. So, but we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see how things go. But uh, the whole point is that the sales are down, and even with the watch, because it's still the market leader, it only shipped 1.1 million in quarter three of 2016, and that was one third of what it shipped uh, in 2015. The new watch, maybe that's what everybody's waiting for. So. Uh, maybe uh, maybe we'll see purchases just completely jump up come the holiday season. But we do know that the the top selling watch is this is and surprise surprise, uh, the number one watch is uh, let's see can you guess let's say three two one yes no okay, it's the Rolex Rolex and we're talking non smart watch here. It might have some capabilities, but it's basically we got the. You got the idea of a Rolex watch. Uh, other other uh, top selling watches is our Citizen, Tag Heuer, Seiko. Um, they all top the list. Some of them do have smart watch options, but a lot of them are, you know, just basically watches. So, anyway, let's move on from there. B double E double R U N B run meet Auto, the first self driving truck. I'm driving a truck, and what better way to test that truck than to ship beer? Yeah, it only makes sense. If it's a success, then you have a great story. But if it fails and it smashes a whole bunch of beer across the highway, you have a great meme and an awesome story. Simple as that. Auto went from Denver to Colorado Springs, uh, so just to be in their test runs, they won't, they're not putting it out just yet out there. But basically, they're looking to reduce the number of fatalities, enable fuel efficiency driving, fuel efficiency driving, and enhance truck utilization. There still has to be a sober non uh, uh, non uh, blah 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 blah. Oh, why are you doing that? Computer's acting funny. We must restart now. <laughs> so anyway, you must have a <laughs> sober driver behind the wheel, somebody that can that can take the wheel at a moment's notice. This is technically like an autopilot option, and it could be a great way to keep the driver and the cargo, everything safe, and I, I like that a lot, um, just as long as you, they don't take it too far. Um, and maybe, you know, it's, it's possible it could lose jobs in the future, uh, but it might also bring more shipping to you guys, so it might actually help with uh, moving more cargo. And that would mean more staff, and that would mean, you know, jobs. So let's move on from there. <clears throat> Are you going to make that Switch, Nintendo Switch, that is? Of course, the new game system is, uh, is technically a tablet, a tablet that you dock into, uh, into a and place to play on the TV. You take it out, and you put the little handles on, and then you can play it on the go. And it kind of makes sense. Games are getting more mobile as mobile devices get even more powerful. You know, like I said, you know, people aren't buying the newest, latest, greatest smartphone because their smartphone is good enough, I think. This device also gives you the option to connect your TV so you can play on a larger screen. Now, the Switch uh, does not have a price just yet, but estimates put it around the $250 mark, which is half the price of an Xbox, half the price of a PlayStation, and half the price of a regular iPad. 
The Switch will release around March of 2017. Now, that usually is the time that Apple does debut the new iPad, so we'll see if this is good competition to, uh, to them and go from there. Oh, yeah, it's time for a new segment we call Comic Book of the Week. And this comic book of the week, uh, of course, is the Wonder Woman 75th Anniversary Special Number 1. This will include uh, multiple stories from artists that have never penned a woman, Wonder Woman comic before. It'll have, it'll have regular, you know, the regular artists, plus all, some new artists that are trying their hand at Wonder Woman, which is pretty cool. The special edition comic gets you ready for the actual box set, which comes out on November 15th. Now, I posted all the links for ordering the comic and pre-ordering the box set in the show notes down below. You can get them right now. Just if you're watching live, you can look down there. There it is. Uh, and you can get those uh, those books right now. So go ahead and do that. Helps me keep the lights on. Thank you very much on that. So Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 75th Anniversary Special. Um, we're gonna do uh, we're going to do comic book of the week segment uh, every single week. This is a brand new segment. So uh, if you've got uh, ideas of what comic books are coming out that you really want to know about, let me know by tweeting me over at Geekazine and uh, Geekazine at gmail.com. Uh, we also have the Twitter Morning Geeks, um, but I'm still working on trying to put that into my into my schedule of watching things. And uh, so I might be a little bit behind on that. So anyway, now when I read this next article, I kind of knew that this was true, but I was still taken back on some of the prices. And basically, we're talking collectibles. Um, And these collectibles, you can actually buy right here, right now, but they're going to cost more than the average car. They probably will cost more than your house. At least if you bought your house in the 90s or 2000s or something like that. Um, but let's, or condo or something like that. Let's put this into perspective because this is actually interesting. Let me flip this over here. Um, so the Ford Fiesta, we'll go back to cars. Ford Fiesta is $14,090. The base Mustang is $24,915. The Chevy Spark is $13,000, and a Silverado is $27,195. Jaguar XE is $34,900. Mercedes C-Class is $39,500, and Porsche 718 Cayman is $53,900. So now we got those, uh, those numbers. The Barbie collection right here is going to double that, more than double. By, you could buy two Porsches, Porsche 718 Caymans, and still have money left over. You can buy three actually Porsche, Porsches now. I'm looking at it probably, and maybe maybe be on the same line. But one hundred sixty-one thousand dollars for a uh, for a specific Barbie collection. Um, this was uh, the Barbie doll. Basically, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure what's in this uh, in this group, but you can get you get a lot of Barbie dolls uh, for this one card. That's what, that's another thing that you can get. $150,000 for a Pokemon Pikachu Illustrator card. One card. That's crazy. Um, even a loose Star Wars action figure collection is asking $32,000. So the price of a car. Uh, a, 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 the closed box, that's what I'm trying to say. A closed box collection is at a buy it now price of $35,000. And of course, this is like multiple sand people and hand solos and stuff like that. Uh, now, keep in mind, these are all asking prices. Uh, they might not get the bids. They might have to adjust their price to go down a little bit. So the Barbie collection might go down one hundred fifty thousand or something like that. But you know, if somebody doesn't buy it, but you know, if you have the cash, you could actually get into any type of collection without you know without even having a single. Barbie doll or or Star Wars figure or anything like that. So that's pretty cool, and uh, you can check that out. Uh, we got that link. Uh, this link. Uh, where was this link? It was over. I don't have it up anymore. Oh, it was on eBay's uh, blog. So check it out and check out. See what what collections that you could get and go from there. We've got the fourth installment of.
Ron Howard skipped the third book simply because it was too much like the other books. Eventually, the law... That just froze up, so we're going to do that again. Hold on. We've got the fourth installment of Robert Langdon's books all new to this week. Okay, so it's the third movie in the series, but the fourth book. Ron Howard skipped the third book simply because it was too much like the other books. Eventually, the lost symbol will be made, but for now, it's true to the name. Lost. As for Inferno, if you're a fan of the Hangover movie series, just picture what it might have looked like with Tom Hanks playing Bradley Cooper's role. That and a little less Vegas and more Florence. Oh yeah, no Galifianakis, but more Felicity Jones. We get some teaser trailers this week. First, the anticipated sequel to the Marvel hit Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And although I like the song Hooked on a Feeling, I think they've been playing it just a little too much. We get a first look at Logan, the third and final Wolverine solo film. Not a fourth film, I'm skipping the third one, but the third one. It is based on the book series Old Man Logan by Mark Millar. The movie actually shows us that Logan is not immortal, as a protege also emerges as a young girl named Laura, and she's being hunted by similar enemies that want to abuse her power. And no, we're not talking about Laura Croft, but, you know, with the name Laura, I started to wonder what Laura Croft would have done if she had an adamantium-laced skeleton. Let the crossovers begin. Star Trek Beyond hits DVD this Tuesday. The summer action movie has 3.5 stars on IMDb and 84% tomato meter reading. It was also the last movie of Anton Yelchin and the induction of the crew going into deep space. You can also check out the Easter eggs like 966. Don't forget, if you want to support this show, I have links to purchase the DVD in the show notes. And that's new to this week. All right, sorry about that. Sometimes, you know, the the, the program doesn't know what to do, and so it kind of goes, Bleh. so that's what happened there. And of course, that's always a pre-recorded segment. We have pre-recorded segments on here, but uh, we're definitely, uh, most uh, for the most point, this is live. I am live right now, and to prove it, uh, we had Robert Hicks, he said hi, and of course he said hi again, but then Jeff Adams uh, got on and said hi. So hello to Jeff Adams, thank you very much for coming to the show. And he said nice shirt, so thank you very much. Um, I like it. So it's got, it's got a texture to it, so I'm kind of like, okay, that's kind of weird. But you can, inside here, you can't see it, but there's like little pumpkins in the black area as well. So it's a lot of fun, you know, it's Halloween, so I should have dressed up this uh, set for Halloween. Might dress it up for the holidays. So, um, before we get back in the news, I just want to give you some, uh, some future notes here. Uh, we did get the uh, okay to go to London, so I will be heading to London at the end of this month. So we'll do a few shows before that, but then we're going to take a two week, uh, two week break because I'm going to be in London for two weeks. <laughs> uh, well, technically 10 days. So it, it's going to be a great time. Um, and of course we're, we're going there for a conference and we'll be doing some uh, recording, live streaming, hopefully live streaming. We'll see what happens, and a little bit more. So uh, check that out uh, in the upcoming weeks. But we got a few weeks before that happens. Uh, everything before Thanksgiving, we'll take that two-week Thanksgiving break, and then I'll come back for the, the Christmas uh, time and go from there. So, All right, let's move on to the geek news. We got one more article here. Uh, first of all, I wanted to show you this because I forgot to show you this picture. When I talked about the $35,000 closed box Kenner Star Wars action figures that's that was the what I wanted to show you and I uh, completely forgot to show you there so uh show you that but right now let's move on here let's talk about Brian Fuller he's actually stepping down from the Star Trek Discovery show uh the new CBS show that debuts next year Fuller has two other shows that he's actually working on and Discovery is a little bit too much on his plate He's going to remain executive producer, um, which is uh, which is really cool. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, but definitely, you know, sometimes sometimes you just got to step back. And maybe this also is another indication of how this show is going to be. I don't know because sometimes that ha does happen. But we'll see. That's just speculation. We're, I'm not going to stick. You know, we'll leave it at that and go from there. So all right. Let's move on to our question or our, our topic of the week here. And that is, has The Walking Dead crossed the line? And uh, basically, it, it, if you've been under a rock, you didn't know. But we'll, we'll tell you now because, you know, you got out of the rock and that's pretty cool. Trade your rock for a bat, a little baseball bat, what's called Lucille. 
No, that's not a Chuck Berry song. That is an actual bat on the show Walking Dead. Now, in the comic book, and, and you know, it's a little bit showing the comic book, but basically what this is, is that uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, I think that's his name, he became Negan, the one of the most uh, psychopathic people out there on The Walking Dead. And the comic gets really, really gritty at this point in time. They wanted to really match that grit. So And so the cast said that it was going to be a very emotional episode. Very emotional episode. Uh, like I said, the comic book steered us into what we were going to anticipate, even though it's not following the comic or graphic novel, whatever you call it. Um, like, for instance, Daryl Dixon was created simply because of the fact that they liked uh, Norman Reedus so much, they wanted to create a character for him. So he's not in the comic at all, but he becomes a fan favorite. So, but, so we get a little bit of an idea of what's uh, going to happen through the comic, but not always that case. I think Dale, um, earlier in the, season, uh, the seasons, he died the wrong way. So they can sh they'll show us that, you know, how people are going to, you know, how it's going to be a little bit, little bit different. Excuse me. Any fan, any fan, I uh, just had another pop-up. <laughs> any fan of The Walking Dead knew this was actually going to be a brutal episode. But some people are claiming that this was actually too brutal for even cable network TV. And uh, while it did change the bar for graphic violence on TV, the real question was, was it too much? Now, Quentin Tarantino said that violence is one of the most fun things to watch. And for a lot of people, that's true. I know that uh, Jennifer doesn't like violence. In fact, we watched The Purge election year we, we went through the uh the the series here and when we watched uh the one before that she whenever anything violent comes on she has to divert her eyes she just doesn't like it so she doesn't watch the walking dead at all not at all but 13.1 million viewers actually watched and uh, a very violent and a very anticipated emotional episode i don't know if they would have described it as fun though Maybe because the hype was, uh, maybe they're watching, that is, because it was all about that hype. Uh, it was all rampant over the summer. I mean, they gave you a cliffhanger. And that season finale, finale uh, th was being chastised for, for trying to get that ratings boost for season seven, uh, episode one. And so that, th that might be a part of it. But the real question is, is that 13.1 million going to continue to watch episode two or go back to their Sunday night football family guy Simpsons once upon a time shows that are uh, kind of geared towards family but have very similar overtones at certain points in the show now this week the parents television council called the episode one of the most graphically uh violent shows we've seen on television and they're absolutely right I have never seen a show take things as far as season seven premiere ever did. Even watching shows like Dexter, Game of Thrones, uh, you know, stuff on Showtime, stuff on HBO, uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead, I don't think ever got that bad. It's, it, it basically tops them all. Now, uh, the uh, Parents Television Console president, Tim Winter, also stated that this is why families should have greater control over TV networks they purchase from cable providers. But really, will that change how this episode is viewed by 13.1 million? It might have changed how the episode is watched, but it would have only fueled the fire. Now, technically, 13.1, that was, that was on the evening. You know, since then, we've, we've had a whole week, so we might be up to about 20 million, maybe a little bit less. But could imagine if they didn't get an opportunity to watch it on the TV show, on the TV channel at that point in time. They would have caught it online or something like that. Maybe through uh, leaked episodes, downloaded it through some sort of peer-to-peer -peer network. They might, we might have saw bigger numbers. Maybe 25 million might have seen, turned out to be. Because, you know, it's like, oh, you can't watch that. You're not supposed to watch that. Okay, I'm going to watch it. So we don't ha even have the numbers, like I said, uh, watching the show after the fact just yet. Uh, and, and, and they might be at 20 to 25 million, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure that 
about uh, 15 to 17 million probably have seen that episode at this point. Now, I'm like I said, I'm keeping this spoiler free, but I will state this. The story, it's not really a spoiler, but the story they portrayed of Negan was exactly the same in the graphic novel. A 15-minute segment at the beginning of the season wouldn't have cut it, or even the last 15 minutes of last season wouldn't have cut it. They needed to make this guy into the psychopath that he is, so you know exactly what, what, what's going on here. And they needed to really get their teeth in there. And there was a lot of things that happened that just, I, and like I said, I can't explain, but it's, uh, you know, it's more than just death. It's bringing somebody to the brink to tell them, I am more superior. And that's just, you know, it's a psychopathic move. Simple as that. And yeah, it's probably one of the uh, most death that you've ever seen on TV before, and that, of course, that includes all the walkers that they kill, or zombies, as, as you might call it. Um, so there was a lot of emotion, raw emotion, and turns that you just didn't expect. So it goes without saying, the show is violent. But how violent could they really take it? Robert Kirkman and Scott Gimple said, I believe at Comic-Con, they wanted to break not only Rick's spirit, but the audience's spirit as well. Did they do that job? And where will it go from here? Will we see even worse in the coming episodes? Probably not. Keep in mind, a show that's too violent and too emotional, people actually will stop watching. There have been a few online polls after the fact, and it's interesting to see how many people found this episode going too far and how many people said that they will not continue to watch the show. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this uh, second episode had the lowest ratings ever. Because they're all turned off. They just, they just can't, they, need, they either need to process what just happened, or they just don't want to watch it. But then they'll get back on the bandwagon, and we'll start seeing numbers go up a little bit more. But here is what we know. We are watching a fictional show uh, about a group of people who have been turned upside down and will never, ever, ever be able to escape their penultimate fate. Of course, becoming dead or being a zombie. You know, just the you know, dead part, you know, we all have to face that. But being a zombie, that would kind of freak me out too. And having to sit there and kill people like people that you knew at one point in time, that's, you know, that's got to create a, a form of PTSD that you could never imagine. Add to that a battle for supremacy of what is out there and a lot of gray lines that would happen in said battle. You know, in the future, in the future episodes, there, there, there's going to be some battle lines, there's going to be some factions out there, and they're going to collide. It's as simple as happening. And, that, and they've already talked about that in the premiere, so it's not really a spoiler. And of course, if you, if you read the graphic no novel, you know what's going to happen, because they're trying to at least follow a basic timeline with the graphic novel. So if, the, if all this was to actually happen, you know, with zombie apocalypse or anything like that, I guess there'd be more Negans out there that would populate the, the Earth than Ricks. And that's the saddest thing, because, you know, how do you, how do you go back to normal life if this happens? I mean, the, your goal is to try and kill all the zombies and then get back to normalcy as best as you can. But if you have... A whole bunch of factions out there that don't have, you know, constitutions, that don't have rules, that have a supreme leader, it's not going to be the same ever again. And I, I think that they, they real, definitely put that point across. And that's, that's what was so exciting about this episode. And I know, like I said, it turned uh, some of you off. But I have a feeling within the next few episodes, and maybe in the next season, you'll be back and you'll be watching again. But this definitely has changed the way we, we watch some TV and set a new bar, that's for sure. So what are your thoughts? What do you think about that? Let me know. You can tweet me over at geekazine, geekazine at gmail.com. Of course, the Twitter handle, Morning Geeks. You can also promote that. Go ahead and like that page. We'll try and put more content on there as well as we move forward. Like I said, uh, upcoming uh, weeks, we've we got a show next week and the week after um, and then, of course, two weeks off at the end of November, right after Thanksgiving to uh, December, as I am going to be in jolly old London, Harrio. So, cheerio, Harrio. Oh, Harrio. I don't know. 
So anyway, uh, went to London last year. It was great. This year is going to be just as fun. We've got some great ideas of where we're going to go this uh, this year after the conference. So we're staying a few extra days, and it's going to be fun. So feel free to, to join me on Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash geekazine. I'd appreciate it much, and go from there. So that's pretty much this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. You guys geek out. We'll see you next week. And uh, if you want to participate, just comment over on uh, on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter. And or not Vine, because apparently Vine's going down. So anyway, geek out. Thanks a lot for watching.